Okay. All right. Um, thank you, Michael. So right. nice to see everybody uh, this morning. I think you know most of the faces are familiar. I think you, Ruth and maybe a couple others. Uh, nice to meet you. And I think I've also had fairly extensive conversations with each of you before, with, with a lot of you, um, and have dragged you into some of my, my other projects. Um, I've given show, these showcases before, one on a telecom company and one on an elder services company that I'm working with now. And both of those kind of grew out of my core business, which is really uh, all, all about networking. So what I wanted to share with the group this morning was at least a, a, an intro to the networking methodology that I've developed. And I'm happy to kind of answer questions as we go. Um, I won't be able to, I probably won't be able to get through all of it, but I'm happy to you know, chat afterwards with folks if they have additional questions or, or so on. So what well, I call it the impresario approach, uh, which I'll ex explain in a minute, <laughs> but the subtitle, as you can see, is an unvarnished view of networking, right? Because obviously we're all interested in networking. That's why we're here. But I think there's all kinds of interest, uh, you know, contradictory rules and thoughts and paradigms. Oh, seems like you froze. Dave, are you still there? Did he freeze on other people's uh, screen too? Yeah, he's frozen. Whoops, maybe he's gone now. Uh, thank you, 2021. Thank you, 2021. Okay, so he's still there, but uh, his screen is not on and we can't hear him. So he's probably gonna jump out and come back in. I will put the timer on pause. Um, and when uh, he comes back in, we'll let him pick up from where he left off. In the meantime, I'm going to, uh, oh, he ended sharing, all right, by himself. Um, why don't we jump right into um, intros and I'm going to put in the chat the order in which people showed up. Um, so Bryce, Nikki, Loretta, Andrew, uh, and today's topic of discussion, should you choose to spend some of your two minutes on that, is um, in, the, um, in light of what Victor was talking about, um, any positive networking experience you've had recently, either through the Trusted Referral Network or elsewhere. Uh, if you'd like to share that with us, um, you wouldn't be here probably if you didn't believe in networking. So hopefully you've had some positive experiences. Um, so Bryce, uh, he says he lost the connection. So I'm sure he'll be back. Continue without me. Okay. <laughs> uh, Bryce, he's trying to get back in. You are up uh, two minutes and take it away. Um, yeah, um, thanks, Michael. Um, I've actually had some really great uh, connections recently through the TRN, Michael specifically. Um, had a really great t uh, call with Nikki um, last week and the week before, um, so really appreciated that. Um, one of the reasons I really enjoyed the, the TRN is I get to learn from you all, and uh, I, it always I always enjoy learning more marketing from other high quality marketers. Um, so having one on one discussions and uh, seeing how we can help one another. I always enjoy that. So I have um, valuable connection, connections sometimes. And I always value um, the people that, that other people know. So I really value the, the TRN for that. Um, and recently we've been talking quite a bit, I, I've been talking quite a bit um, about one of our main products, Ad Cannibal, which um, is, is starting to get some really good traction um, in, in some places, not, not so much in other places, but uh, you know that, that's kind of corporate sales. So yeah. <laughs> um, and I, I don't have much to say today, so I'll, I'll cede my time. All right. Do you want to talk about any of your other products uh, or delve deeper into Ad Cannibal? I don't think Ruth knows anything about it, for example. Um, I think I actually had a one-on-one -on -one with Ruth a, oh, a while ago. Sorry, <laughs> you're just. On I top. do know about it. Thank you. Ah, wow. <laughs> Always surprising. Um, yeah, uh, no, I, I talk about Ad Cannibal quite a bit. So uh, today I'm actually going to talk about. Well, I'll just briefly say, so we're combining a whole bunch of our products into uh, a package called the Domination Package, which is specifically for service-based companies like roofers, painters, electricians, stuff like that. Um, basically, we're going to take over the, the front page of Google for those types of clients, and we're only going to take two clients per city, um, because otherwise we'd be optimizing against ourselves. So, yeah, 
uh, that's going to be a big thing that I'm going to be focusing on this year in parallel with Ad Cannibal. So if anybody knows any, any service-based businesses that they want to take over, uh, let me know. Uh, that's it. Well, you should connect definitely with uh, Rochelle because she works with service-based businesses as well. All right. So Victor, are you back? <laughs> yes, at least for, the, for now. Sorry about uh, that. Oh, no problem. Stuff happens. All right. Um, and you should be, oh, let me see. Okay. Yes, you should be able to do the sharing again, and I will put you back up for 13 minutes. Okay. Sorry about that, folks. Um, I think, oh, I need to, re sorry, I need to reopen the sure. PowerPoint. Uh, where the heck am I? We see where you are. Okay. Sorry, I should have done that before I uh, hopped back on. That's quite all right. And so you're, okay, we're sharing, here it is. Yep. Pick up where you left off, yes. Sounds like a good idea. Okay. If you put it in presentation mode, it should work. Yep. Okay. So far, so good. All right. So the, the, this is fairly straightforward, right? What's your purpose? What's your outcome? And then how, how are you putting all the pieces together to get the outcome? So that's why I came up with the term, the impresario approach. You know, the definition is somebody who organizes concerts, plays, operas. So that's in effect what you, I think you're trying to do with your networking. So these are two impresarios you might recognize. Uh, the person on the left is uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber, you know, Jesus Christ Superstar, you know, all those kinds of things, Phantom of the Opera. And then the other person is Ava DuVernay. And I included her because not only did she produce Selma, for example, but she also did a science fiction movie called A Wrinkle in Time recently, you know, starring Reese Witherspoon. So the point is that, you know, as you're uh, creating your productions, it's important to be flexible and really know what you're doing and be able to work in different situations, in different contexts. But basically the idea is that you're driving toward an objective that you've set for yourself. Okay, so the core of my production, as I'm calling it, is that I help my connections monetize their connections, is really leveraging the network and looking for opportunities uh, of, on, on one hand and then finding the other side of the opportunities on the other hand. So let me give you an example, which actually in involves a TRN. So I, I know Rajiv's not here today, but I, he, was, he was on the last week's call, so hopefully he doesn't mind me taking his name in vain again. So I, I imagine a lot of the folks on this call already know Rajiv. He's a super connector, like many of the folks here. And Rajiv introduced me to a company that's involved in fantasy sports. Um, and I have no interest in sports, no interest in fantasy sports, but I think Rajiv, Rajiv was just uh, thought this guy would be an interesting person for me to meet. So I did, at first, I didn't really have any ideas for him, but I did kind of park him in the back of my brain and kind of, you know, look to see what, what might develop. And this might, this story might seem a little bit familiar because I know I did talk to some folks about this uh, on last week's call. So that was step one. Rajiv introduced me to the fantasy sports guy. The second step was that I, I finally realized I did have a connection who is involved with a lot of sports organizations around the world and gets involved in you know, fighting sports, soccer, youth, all these sorts of things in areas that might be potentially useful to this fantasy sports platform. The other element is that the fantasy sports platform is either driven by the sports organizations themselves or high level advertising and sponsorships which is also the bread and butter of a lot of the professional sports organizations. And then my connection number two here is a guy, he used to be the head of Universal McCann. So he's very tied into not only sports, but also advertising and sponsorships. So essentially I put connection number two in touch with the fantasy sports guy so that num connection number two could then take it potentially to his sports organizations. So that was kind of, that was part of the process. The other reason I made this introduction was because it was, it was, I'm not really able to assess whether this fantasy sports company is any good, right? Because I'm not really the target market. So I needed somebody to say, yes, this company is a good idea, bad idea, it works, it doesn't work, and so on. I needed somebody to validate the idea. 
So I used my network both to find a potential opportunity as well as to get the validation. So we essentially accomplished both of those objectives. Uh, the last phone call we had with connection number two was he brought 12 people onto the Zoom call so that they could under, really understand the, the opportunity of the fantasy sports. So that's, that's good enough for me, right? That tells me there's really something here. And now the third step is to then introduce it to my other connections, right? Whether it's people I knew, you know, from my Time Inc. days, guys who used to be at Sports Illustrated, or other people that I've met along the way who are in my network, if they might also have interest in the fantasy sports, now it seems worth my while to take it to them. And then if anything happens, then essentially everybody who participates in any particular transaction, uh, you know, participates in the, in the profits or the revenue that we generate in, in commission. Okay. So that's essentially how it works, is it's a two-step process to meet this person, and then it was a two-step process to meet the other side of the transaction, and then I just tried to put the whole thing together. So that's the impresario approach. So let me just see if anybody had any questions, and then I'll move to the next, before I move to the next step. No? Nothing okay. in chat right now. Okay. And, all right. So in terms of the framework, right, uh, how to, of monetizing the network, so, sorry, there's a typo. Since it's slightly before lunch, I was kind of thinking of this, I guess, in terms of in, in food terms, right? So it, to me, it's a three-step process, right? What I call sowing, you know, sowing the seeds is being in networking groups like this one or getting introductions from friends and connections, right? So that's, you kind of see what's out there, uh, out in the field, as it were, right? The winnowing process is then going through the networking groups and all the other people I've met to really figure out, step one, who do I want to have these one-on-one -on -one conversations with? Who do I want to start? think about building the relationship, right? Because we all meet so many people that I don't think it's really possible to follow up and build relationships with everybody else. So then the third step, what I call bake, right? Is to then follow up with the most promising. And the, and the, pro the way to determine who's the most promising is both from the conversation that you have with them. And then there's other steps I have to try to kind of filter people out and really see who I think would be the most promising going forward. And so, so for example, what I look for is what do I want for this person, right? And what I want to be very clear on this, and this is what I mean by the, an unvarnished look at networking, right? I, I find a lot of the networking advice is very sort of soft, right? Like, what can you do for the other person? And that's great, but I think I'd like to start with the question uh, of what do I want from this person before I figure out what I can do for them, right? The second question is, are they willing and able? Because oftentimes you run into people, they seem great, they have the right connections or the right job or whatever, but in the course of the networking, you realize you know, that's not really what they're about and they don't fit and that's fine. And then you just kind of move on to the next one. And if they pass both tests, then the question becomes, how do I get them to do what I need them to do, right? And again, I wanna be very straightforward about this because obviously you know, we have an objective in these conversations. Um, it's kind of like my, my former wife used to say to me, why do you go to all these networking groups? You already have lots of friends. So it's, you know, if I make new friends in this process, that's great, but it's really not about, you know, that's not the objective. The objective is to generate business out of this. And then how do I draw people into the network? So I have two different approaches that are, as I say, <laughs> opposing yet compatible. So reciprocity, is that I think the framework that most people use and that and is generally advocated in networking groups, right? You do something for them, they do something for you, and then you kind of trade favors back and forth. Now, reciprocity is very important. There's a terrific book called Influence, which I imagine a lot of people on this call have read. Um, and it's written by a professor named Robert Cialdini at the University of Arizona. So it's, you know, the book is almost 30 years old and it's kind of the godfather of these sorts of networking uh, ty types of types of books. Now, the the one reason I don't really like reciprocity as much is because it can concern create guilt or an obligation on the other person's part. Okay, so like you know, Michael, I just did you a favor yesterday. What have you done for me lately? Right? Or you know, I, I did something for you, I did something for you, and then you know, I, is what you're doing good enough for for me? Right? So for example. I don't know if you've been watching the, the Biden trip, right? Biden gave Boris Johnson a bicycle 
And Boris Johnson gave Biden a framed picture. <laughs> By the so, way, it's about so, four, four and a half minutes left. Okay. So, so, th th so there's always a risk of sort of a mismatch. Um, one webinar I went, the guy actually said there'd be a trade, right? Every referral you send me, I'll send you one. And I'm not really crazy about that because then it becomes about, let's just generate some referrals for, you know, of whatever dubious quality, because all I'm looking for is reciprocity back from you. So while I think reciprocity is good, it can be used in a lot of circumstances, there are, there's another technique that I, I really prefer. And that's what I call the favorable inclination or, or what's also known in many cases as the Ben Franklin effect. So I don't know if a lot of people have, uh, have come across this, but the idea behind the Ben Franklin effect is, as he said, you know, is, is once somebody's done you a favor, they're actually more likely to do you another favor, right? So the idea is not necessarily that you go first and say, hi, I did you a favor, now you owe me a favor. It's more to get them to do you a favor first and then follow that up with a bigger favor from them next, right? So it's a little bit counterintuitive to I think a lot of the ways that people approach networking. The, the science behind it is what's called, you know, I'm sure we've all heard this term, right? Cognitive dissonance is that we don't like to hold opposing ideas in our head. We like to be consistent in everything we do. So if, if somebody does you a small favor, they're probably thinking, oh, I did it because I must like them. Otherwise, why am I bothering? Right? There, then the next step becomes, since I like this person, as I've proven, because I did something for them, then I have to keep doing things for them. Um, and so the, what Franklin used was he would ask people to borrow a book from them. Now, remember, this is pre-Amazon. So presumably, borrowing a book is a big deal, right? If books are expensive, they're rare, but they're really no effort on the part of the giver. Right? So you borrow the book, return the book, and then later he would ask for another favor. So that's a technique that I think... Um, I can go into more detail on some other occasion, but that's really the idea is to get them to go first and then get them to go second. Uh, and even Cialdini uh, in his book, out of the six things he had, he referred to this, uh, he referred to as liking and liking did number four, was number four. So since I'm probably running out of time, let me just Minutes. jump right to the end. Okay, so the summary is have a plan, Winnow your network, and part of the process is by, by letting the other person go first, you can then get a sense of, is this somebody that I want to build a relationship with them, right? If you can't get them to connect with you, go first, uh, if they don't seem interested in building a relationship, you know, then it's time to work, move on. If they do, if they are favorable towards you, then the idea is to, to work your network, because that's really where the power is. I think as I showed in the diagram, the power of both finding opportunities and then finding ways to fulfill opportunities. So I'll leave you with the last thought, which is, I'm a big fan of Charlie Brown, is the network is really, eventually the network becomes your friend and my friends make me better. Thank you. Uh, do we have questions in the last minute or so? Any, nothing in the chat right now. Okay. All right. Um, but I'm going to, uh, as I said, as, as you um, went offline for a little bit, uh, the challenge of the day was, uh, in light of your showcase, um, was to comment on any positive networking experiences you might have had uh, before, you, you know, as you do your uh, introduction, or perhaps a tip. Um, and Bri Bryce already went, um, and Bryce uh, certainly gave uh, some um Review, uh, I should say, talked about some positive impact that uh, this group has had on him. Okay. Um, so let's let's jump. So thank you very much for that. Uh, we're thank gonna you. Go, we're going to go to the two minute, um, the two minute timer, and uh, Nikki, then Loretta, then Andrew. So Nikki, uh, you are up. If everybody else would go on mute so that um, Nikki can come up in the main screen when she starts speaking. Hi everyone, I'm Nikki Fielding, president of Digital Brand Expressions. We're an agency that focuses on three things, marketing, analytics, 
search engine marketing, and social media marketing. We work with companies that are already working in these channels and they know what the numbers are that they want to be hitting and they have an issue, they're not hitting them, they contact us and my team will do an evaluation and help show them how to improve the performance. Um, we can work with them as consultants. We can also then continue as their agency of record for search and social if that's the way that things evolve as we're working with them. So we work with companies of all different sizes, primarily middle market and Fortune 500. Um, we're known as the experts, experts for search engine and social media marketing. And um, we don't focus on an industry, we focus on the channels. So we make these channels work for pharmaceutical, B2B, consumer, business services, tech. There's no industry that we can't help um, clients perform better with their search engine and social media marketing. So if you, I presented a few weeks ago, Michael's got the video of my presentation up on the network. Um, we pay a 10% referral fee for the first year's income on any referred business. And um, if you'd like to talk with me further, um, you can always reach me. Again, Michael's uh, video has all of my contact info. And um, I've been meeting with some of you individually. I've talked with Bryce and Victor and Dave and some of the other folks. And I've been really enjoying the conversations in this network and Faith. <laughs> so I say we Faith, thank you. So um, yeah, thanks, thanks for the moments. Thank you. And thank you for the, uh, the very cool earrings, the peace earrings from the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Great, wonderful. Uh, next is Loretta, then Andrew, then Brian. Loretta, you're up. I am. Good morning. Um, so um, I am transitioning from being in full time agency and, uh, and supplier work to doing some consulting. And I'm happy to say I'm doing some work with Bryce through the connection of this network, which I'm very happy about, um, and talking to some other people. But I was going to talk about networking for a minute, um, which is that. Number one, I found, I, you know, I commented um, on one of my networking groups. I belong to this one and um, a couple of others. One that I, Ruth and I have belonged to since I think 2008 when we started, when they started the group. And Ruth was actually nice enough to have several of us over to meet in person because one of our older friends was, oldest members was moving away. It was very exciting in today's world to get to actually see people and try to remember how tall and short everybody is, and that was fun. But I, I think that um, it, it was, I'm, I'm a good networker, and it was very difficult for me when COVID happened. And being at home, one of the things that was recommended to me was Lunch Club, which I don't know how many of you belong to it, but I have found it to be very, very helpful. And if anybody doesn't and wants to join, I would be happy to send you an invitation. I'm still doing it on a weekly basis. Had a wonderful meeting with somebody yesterday. I think I can actually be much more of help to her than she can to me, and that's perfectly fine. I'm happy about that, and I hope that I can. But now that COVID is, it, we're beginning to go back outside. Um, one of the things that I have done for many, many years is that when I was unemployed during the recession and realized how important networking was, I had made sure that I keep connected to people that I've worked with over the years. And I have found that it really continues to pay off generously throughout. And as time goes by, I still know if there's something I wanna get connected to that if I look through my network, the odds are there's somebody that I worked with and I've kept that connection up. And so it gives me the opportunity and I'm sure you all probably do the same thing, but I, I think that that has made the biggest difference for me over the last 10, plus years as I have found um, the job market to be a little more up and down than I would like to. Um, and besides that, it's incredibly enjoyable. So Thank you. meeting up with friends. Okay, wonderful. Um, and yes, I'm happy to be part of the other, at least one other networking group with Loretta um, and Ruth. Andrew, then Brian, then Sharon. Hey there. Um, I'll take a little bit different tech, uh, learning, learning and networking. If, if you're in groups where in networking groups where the folks there are, are not in the realm of what you do, um, your time's valuable. I got dragged into, into a meeting this past week 
that I knew wasn't a good idea, but I did it as a favor to someone in my network group and, and met some of the most disingenuous, uh, a amateurish folks in networking. I, I actually had a woman argue with me because she got into MIT when she was 11 years old and she knows more than me. And when I dug into it, it turned out that what she meant by getting into MIT wasn't that she was a freshman, that she graduated from there. She took a photography class, but that was her, her proof of, of who she was and the benefit that she brought forward as, as she tried to tell me that uh, uh, she could help me with my elevator pitch. So, um, you know, when, when now that we're, people are getting busier and, and, and more active, uh, my advice to anyone in the networking group is really look around the room and make sure those are the people you want to be around um, and that the folks that you're with actually are, are of either you can or they can benefit you because it's been, it was a strange week in, in networking for me. That was one of three weird incidents. And that's less than two minutes, so I don't get Michael showing me his cell phone. No, no, I don't. But you have 36 seconds left uh, if you want to add anything else about what you do. Or... Sure. Yeah, we're, we're a strategy first global marketing and, and sales consulting company. We, we, we turn off all of the tactical tools for our clients until they actually have a core strategy that they could build on. Because last year, we estimated we saved our clients about $10 million in active tactical spending that was a waste of money. Growing, growing their businesses with less because they have a true strategy and they know who they're marketing to. And we have offices in about 120 countries we're affiliated with. So if you want to take your global strategy to the world, we're, we're your guy. All right. Thank you. Okay. Brian, then Sharon, then Ken. All right. Well, my name is uh, Brian Rudolph and uh, I'm digital marketing, digital transformation consultant. Uh, I, I feel like I'm a one guy Andrews company because <laughs> that's essentially also what I do. I, I take a look at all of the digital touch points, map out a, a customer journey and make sure that people are leveraging all of those digital channels uh, effectively, providing them more efficiency with their marketing dollars, creating a marketing engine. And um, once I've built out a... Um, a roadmap or a playbook for uh, for one of my clients. I act as the quarterback, pulling in subject matter ex subject matter experts, pulling in people from my network, and um, helping them execute uh, to you know again along along the prioritization that we've laid out in the playbook. Uh, so aside from on the networking side, aside from you know one or two. Uh, hey, let's go meet at this craft brewery for the evening. I have not gotten out there in person yet. So uh, I think next week is going to be, or maybe the, the week after is going to be the first time that I do it because, you know, I'm just getting back into it. So uh, I've, I've actually enjoyed this, uh, the Zoom. Uh, I've, I've gotten to meet people in locations that I, I would never have connected with pre-COVID. So it's, uh, it's, you know, I am hoping that there will still be a very good balance between, you know, this type of networking event and the live networking events as things come back. Oh, I got the cell phone. Oh, ah. You got the cell phone. And I see that you're also wearing a Snoopy t-shirt. So you and Victor need to talk about <laughs> Charlie Brown, of course. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, that was, so Sharon, then Ken, then Andrew, uh, Andre, I'm sorry, Archambault, but, uh, Sharon first. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Sharon Shanzer. My company is RLD Group. I am, or we are, a graphic design web development agency. I specialize in all things, basically, which is actually not specializing, but I do print uh, and web design and development um, for print, kind of anything that needs to get printed, um, which covers everything, including packaging. And for web design, I specialize in WordPress and also Shopify. Um, do most of the work myself, and then I have people that I call upon when needed. I've been in business for over 20 years, um, and no thank, uh, thanks in no small part to a lot of networking. Um, I basically get all of my business from referrals at this point, both from a networking standpoint and also from obviously having been doing it for a long time, hopefully well, and keeping my clients happy. Um, in terms of networking, my philosophy is really that I will kind of 
take all comers and speak to people pretty much about anything. You just never know. I've had, I had one client, I'm on Yelp, which is not really networking, but I'm on Yelp and I have a client that called me a long time ago. And, you know, someone I, in an abstract would not, should not have taken seriously because he was a little nutty. And he's turned out to be one of my, I wouldn't say my best client, but my most, one of my most lucrative clients, which is different. <laughs> um, so you never know. Um, and actually my biggest client by far now is a, is a client that came as a result of many generations ago networking. I mean, um, a referral through BNI. I was part of a BNI chapter in San Francisco. And then I started a chapter when I moved back to New York. So um, you never, you just never know. I mean, it's really, that's like a 10th generation. This con this client of mine, which is a bank is about a 10th generation BNI referral. So um, my philosophy is that uh, no kind of job too big or too small. You'll never know, kind of never know what it'll, things will grow into, um, what relationships will develop or what relationships will evolve from, you know, a small relationship into a bigger client. I have a I just got a great new client that was um, my sister-in-law's friend who's a photographer and she needs a little bit of work and she referred me to someone else and I'm doing a big project for somebody else. So you just never know. Um, anyway, Sharon Shanzer, RLD Group, print and web design and um, have a great day, everybody. Thank you very much, Sharon. Ken, then Andre, then David Cutler. Hi, I'm Ken Simon, uh, KBS Marketing. I do a combination of strategic marketing and digital marketing. I work with companies to help them understand who their customers and markets are and then develop the strategies for them to use to get uh, to target those markets you know, through digital campaigns, et cetera. Um, in terms of networking, and I, I talk also just uh, B2B and you know, I do mostly B2B type of uh, companies I work with. Um, in terms of networking, um, I sort of like follow networking. I sort of like think of it as a windy road. I never know where it's going to take me and, and, and who it's going to introduce me to. And uh, that's how I ended up here. I, I think I joined Lunch Club. I don't even know how I found Lunch Club or they found me. And then I met Michael and Michael you know, introduced me here. And then I also ended up in about five different networking groups uh, through COVID. Um, all online just you know that I never probably would have heard of or been part of because of through Zoom you know I could join them and and then talk to these people I don't know what's going to happen once the economy picks up and you know some of these networking groups will go by the wayside or online networking I'm not sure um but you know I, I find that it you know it introduces me to people and I just follow it to you know to the uh to see where it leads and uh you know I've been able to get some accounts from it and everything so um it's been an interesting plus i enjoy the conversations i get with the people too because just meeting people and and, and listening to their stories is, is an interesting way of learning and seeing how you can help them yeah and ken i think you were part of Meng a while back the marketing that, that, working that is true that, that, god that was a long time ago that i was part of Meng in the you know so i forgot about yeah. that as was Loretta, as was um, um, Ruth. Okay. Yeah, um, that was and Sharon. Wow. Okay. Um, let's see. That was Ken, then Andre, David, Vic, uh, Victor, you've already gone. So um, <laughs> Andre, David, then Ruth. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Andre Archambault. Um, I think I, similarly to Bryce, have, have had. Uh, one on ones are close to one on ones with nearly everybody here. Sharon and I need to do so, and Loretta and I need to do so, but otherwise, I think I've chatted with everybody. Um, I work for a division of the USA Today Network. Um, we were once known as Reach Local and technically still are, uh, but we're in the process of pivoting, and probably by year's end, uh, that will be good nighted uh, entirely. The end of the day, we're a digital ad agency that services local and regional businesses around the country. We have 300 local publications around the country um, that we support doing digital advertising and, and marketing solutions. Uh, for me, networking, probably the greatest lesson I learned from my dad uh, was how to network uh, and how to grow and, 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 um, uh, and nurture a network. I've been in this field for 17 years. Nearly every job I've ever had and every client I've ever gotten has been through my network. Um, 
in the pandemic. I, it's funny. I actually had I had my first live uh, lunch uh, via lunch club uh, last Friday uh, in a year and a half or so. And so it was uh, it was a little it was a little weird. We both thought it was a little weird. And um, um, it's it's how I've grown my business is how I've grown my relationships, um, personal and professional. So um, and I've enjoyed the couple of months that I've been involved with TRN uh, since I guess last fall, I think is when I really jumped in. So um looking forward to getting to know the rest of you guys here and um i yield back my time michael okay thank you very much um let's see david cutler are you still here then ruth and faith now david was sort of um listening in but he may have cut out so let's go to um ruth stevens and faith then dave nadell Thank you. Great to meet uh, all of you and some I, I'm already longtime friends with, so it's very nice to see uh, familiar faces. I'm happy to be included as a, a trial run or visitor. I, like many here, am a longtime self-employed consultant I specialize in business to business marketing and I uh, have built, like many of you said, my entire business over 21 years entirely through networking and, and referrals. Um, the other way I get business is by writing in the marketing press, but really referrals are it, right? And um, I have a, a side hustle, which is teaching in business schools here in, in New York. I've been on the faculty at Columbia and now at NYU Stern. And I've also had the fun of teaching in business schools abroad these last four or five years as a visitor, something people call academic tourism. It's been a source of great joy and, and um, amusement for me. I'm set, scheduled to go to Taiwan this fall to teach in Taipei, but they're having a little COVID surge, so I don't know if that's going to work. What I wanted to say about networking is that I was an avid Meng member in the day, and a, a, a bunch of fellow Meng, Mengers and I got together over lunch about two years ago, and we were griping about how much we missed it. So we started a little Facebook group called CME or Community of Marketing Executives. And we're on Facebook and we're proud. <laughs> but um, if any of you would like to join this kind of Meng Light, there's no fees, no bureaucracy, um, very limited um, administration, all volunteer, <laughs> please let me know. I'm on Facebook as Ruth P. Stevens, and I'll get you invited. And uh, there's yet another network to hang around in. There are about 300 of us there. Thanks, Michael. Thank you. Um, Faith uh, Thomasis, Thomasis, David, uh, Nadell, then Jeff, then me. Faith, you're up. You're on mute still, Faith. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, good. Yeah, I'm Faith Thomasis. I'm also a solopreneur, although I call my company Thomasis and Company. And essentially, I help clients articulate what they want to say in as few words as possible. So that means I do copywriting, I do name development, which is the, the most targeted way that you want to communicate yourself. And I also get involved with positioning planning for organizations and all of the work that goes into that in terms of helping people articulate what they want to be and how they want to be perceived and and the the interviewing of the client that goes along with that um, I work both directly with clients and as a partner subcontractor with other consultants design agencies firms etc 
I'm a generalist so that um, I've got experience in a wide range of industries. Uh, I am enjoying this TRN. It took me a while to get going with it, but now I think I've met half of the people here. So uh, my enthusiasm is growing. My favorite networking story is in terms of you never know is I went to a camp reunion and saw a guy I hadn't seen since we were 16 and told him what I did and he became a client and I got three big projects out of that. So you never know. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> really, it's true. <laughs> so I welcome, I welcome meeting the rest of you and um, I'll put my website up on the page. And uh, what I've said before is, is just as a, a hook, Michael has suggested I use a hook. I came up with the name for the icon parking lots in New York City. So those of you that are in New York will remember that. So, Faith, uh, Faith is a copywriting icon, as she says, or as I say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, wonderful. Um, let's see, David Nadell, Jeff Swartz. Hello, everybody. Good to see you. Um, uh, thanks for sticking around till the end. Uh, I run a company called Venture P Media Digital Marketing. I provide a lot of the same services you all do. What I've been focused on lately has been um, data-driven on-site conversion optimization for my clients, uh, as opposed to demand generation, which I also do. Um, I try and help my clients figure out what's going on on their site that's causing, you know, inhibiting conversions uh, and then set up a plan to get baseline readings on measurements on KVAs and a plan to start moving the needle uh, on that so that I can make all marketing more effective for my client whether it's paid or non-paid or uh, anything like that. Um, as far as networking is concerned, if it weren't for networking I would never would have known that Andre and I love the same bagel place on the Upper East Side. <laughs> Uh, which is called the Bagel Mill, in case any of you are interested. Uh, but in all seriousness, um, I've been involved with networking groups before as a guest for BNI, and I didn't really, I ended up getting value out of it in a weird way because I met somebody who was a guest and I was a guest, and that's who I made the connection with, not anybody who was at the BNI meeting. But with respect to this type of group, when we're all in the same industry, what I found is you know, there's a lot of overlap in our services with each other. And in those kind of cases, we could still work together in a supportive role and we could support each other and have another pair of eyes on things. Sometimes you might need that, but there's also opportunities where there's no overlap where, you know, anybody can provide service to somebody else. So either way, you can't lose with networking. So thank you, Michael, for this group. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's see. Jeff Swartz, are you still with us? Yes, I am. Um, Dave, I actually, I 100% agree. I like there's the overlap, but then there's those holes and those gaps that we can kind of fill for each other. And, and you know, for me, I own Ethic Advertising Agency. We're a, a team of seven that specializes in hyper targeted digital paid advertising and creative development. So the gaps that, that I kind of identify with the group that's on here today is, our specialty in, in uh, programmatic digital advertising and also video production uh, as well. Those are two things that, that we kind of have uh, that um, I think are a little bit more of a unique uh, component for some of our stuff uh, as, as well uh, as being like a, you know, born from a full service agency, so being very consolidated. When it comes to networking, I've never been a huge fan of the group stuff uh, over the years, but it's gotten, you know, for me, I've kind of warmed up to it and I've seen a lot of value from it. I'm big on one-on-one -on -one networking. Uh, kind of the notes that I took down for how I do it is I have something called an open door policy to where I talk to anybody and everybody for at least a small little bit of time while still respecting my time. So I'll have a conversation with a college kid that's just getting started all the way up to the CEOs of larger companies as as well too and the mission for all those one-on-ones is never to what can i get out of it for me it's always what value can i bring to it and if there's something where that connection makes sense then that's where the conversation leads if not then it's 
you know, 15, 30 minutes up to 45 minutes of having a conversation with somebody where I call it planting a seed, not the right fit for me now personally, but at least I gave some value and I feel good about it. And you never know where, you know, one year, five years, 10 years, 20 years down the road that something might, might pop up. Um, the other thing that I do with it is I get, try to get very quickly to the heart of where the conversation needs to get to. So we can get to the value faster. So if it, if it is revealed that, yes, this is not a situation where I'm going to be getting a client or anything, but it's a situation where I just need to give value to this individual and send them on their way and everything. I want to get to that quickly to respect kind of my time, but also bring that value for it as well. The last point, because I know that I'm at time and everything, is we also have been utilizing paid advertising, organic uh, uh, as well too for ourselves. And having that combination with the networking has been a really nice kind of um, uh, harmonious uh, effect as well too. So we're getting, you know, from a lead standpoint, leads from all three of those, but it's not just one thing working. I'm, I'm on a meeting, I can't talk. Working plus the advertising plus something else. But right. Thank you, Jeff. Um, uh, by the way, your uh, audio was a little either echoey or shaky, just you might want to look into that. I mean, we could hear, but it was, it was, uh, I don't know, there was noise behind, not behind it, with it, in the signal. Uh, did I miss anybody before I go to myself? Have I, I'm going through the, I don't think I missed anybody. Um, then I will give myself two minutes and we may end early. So my name is Michael Bendit. Um, I founded this group um, uh, about a year and a half ago, maybe. Uh, and it's been growing. It's a great experience for me. I enjoy the process of, of building communities like this. Um, one of the challenges that I have, and perhaps um, it's why I'm organized, is because I find it very difficult to remember all the connections that I've made. So um, I, I like to jot things down. I like to um, uh, you know, put together lists. And that skill set um, has sort of um, been something that I've been able to bring to, the, to, the, uh, to this group. Um, so with the website, the directory website, and with, uh, you know, the technology I've been able to, uh, to harness, um, you know, offering that up as, uh, as a service to, uh, to this community is, is something that I like doing and something where I really feel I can uh, bring value. And I, of course, most of my business um, comes from networking. Um, I, I make sure that I, I I try to differentiate myself in the in the in the world of marketing. Um, you know, there aren't a lot of people um, who focus who do what I do, which is represent software development teams. Um, so my role is representing about ten different teams, uh, understanding what their real capabilities are, what their skills are, uh, and bringing business to them that is very relevant to what they what they do and um, and their. Uh, their complete package, whether it's a combination, it's usually a combination of technology, pricing, um, availability, uh, skill set, um, onshore, or off offshore, et cetera. Um, and the focus of my work is marketing and startups. So those are the types of clients that I look for. Uh, and I do a lot of work with uh, digital marketing agencies in partnership with those agencies um, who do websites, for example, but may not always have the right resources in a house um, for the particular opportunity. Um, great. Um, we do have a few more minutes. I will move to gallery view. Um, thank you all for being here. Any comments, questions for, for Victor for on his um, presentation or comments in general? Oh, by the way, I did, uh, I think I changed the configuration on Zoom so you can get in uh, with just the, um, uh, the Zoom link. Um, did anybody, was anybody, did everybody register or did anybody go direct to the Zoom link? I went what direct to the Zoom link. Oh, you yep. did, okay, so it worked. Okay, good. It did. All right, yeah, there was a configuration that said, you know, require registration or not. I, it, before it was on, so I clicked it off. You learn things all the time with this technology. I think Zoom has about 150 configuration buttons. Um, so thank you, Ruth, for, uh, for visiting. Um, I hope you got a sense of what we do. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, everybody in, in, around the table is, is in marketing, sales, or advertising, much like men. 
uh, difference being, you know, we're all service providers um, and uh, the idea is peer-to-peer -peer networking. Questions for me or Victor? Yes, Loretta. Are you saying goodbye? <laughs> Not raising your hand. All right. Um, wonderful. Thank you very much, everybody. I will be um, posting this, of course, to the YouTube um, channel, uh, and it will be mentioned, of course, in my newsletter. And uh, enjoy the, the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and the, the extra four minutes you have before your next meeting. Take care. Michael. Take care, everybody. Bye -bye. Have a great day. Thank you. Great Bye, week. everybody. Bye.